Hello, welcome and thank you for joining this webinar with uh, Product School on how good PMs are good diplomats. I am so happy, delighted and humbled to be back. Uh, so thank you and shout out to Carlos and the whole Product School family, including yourself. I'm uh, very grateful that you're here with me, giving me a chance to teach some of the things that I, I find to be really important uh, to break into product and also to fuel your, your product growth. Um, I love doing that. I love uh, coaching and mentoring. So thank you for being here and giving me the chance to do that. So let's kick right into it. All right. So good PMs are good diplomats. Let's open up with a question. What do the CEOs of Google and Microsoft have in common? Giving y'all a moment to think. Satya Nadella and Sundar Pichai were both product managers turn product leaders and rose to the top to become CEOs at some of the biggest and most fantastic tech, co um, tech companies in the world. They also happen to have a reputation of being good diplomats. So what does that mean? What is a diplomat? Consulting Google, I was able to modify it just a bit uh, to my liking, but I think this capture, captures it well. A diplomat is a person who can deal with people in an empathetic and effective way. So dealing with people in the sense of dealing with your customers, dealing with your teammates, uh, understanding them, empathetic in the sense of listening really, really well, understanding multiple uh, perspectives so you can synthesize them, make decisions, and bring people together uh, to move towards uh, a common vision, common goal, and solve a problem in a very effective manner. Ultimately, uh, product managers, product leaders, we're driving outcome, we're driving results. So this is a way to go about it with good diplomacy. Uh, and I looked to those two stories, highly recommend. Uh, if you haven't seen some of the coverage on uh, their career and how they rose into becoming a CEO of um, some of the most amazing companies out there, um, you'll see the story of diplomacy within their backgrounds. All right, so what are some of the ways that you could apply good diplomacy? I like to start off with asking for help. I think that this is underutilized, under leveraged. I can't um, overemphasize this. This helped me break into product management and I feel for many of you, that's what you're looking to do in, in this um, audience of, of Product School webinar folks. Uh, I'm happy and delighted uh, to help out and also share a story on how that uh, was effective for me. So reading out the Steve Jobs quote, I've never found anybody that didn't want to help me if I asked them for help. Now I didn't have exactly the same track record. Uh, however, uh, I do find this to, to be generally true. It does matter. Uh, and how you ask for help, um, letting the, um, why you ask for help and letting the other person understand it well, um, and when you ask for help. So thinking about the ways that you can approach somebody uh, to reach out, even cold emails, uh, LinkedIn messages, whatever it might be, think about your approach, how you go about it, and when you go about it, and giving um, people the appropriate context where it makes sense to say, hey, oh, understand why I sh uh, why I, I could help this person, how it's gonna make me um, have some kind of value, feel good about it, and really invest my time and attention into helping this other person. Well, um, I was uh, lucky to break into product in, in this manner. So understanding um, who I could ask for help from to learn the product craft, um, surrounding myself with the right people that understood that the more I knew about it, the more effective I could be at my job being an engineer and developing uh, consumer facing products for mobile apps and helping them understand the ecosystem. It was a great win-win. It was a good relationship both ways where we're both leveling uh, each other up. Um, so that was one of the ways that it was super effective for me to break into product in general, but also this is something that carries on into your career. This applies uh, well beyond breaking into your career, but also to do an effective job uh, understanding um, 
what questions to ask, who to ask them from, and that's effectively asking for help. Uh, you're going to collaborate with so many people along the way on the, the products that you're going to be delivering, um, elevating customer experiences. Um, that requires help from a whole bunch of other people that you're going to have to rally um, and bring together along on a common uh, mission, vision, and goal. So asking for help. Can't understate that. That's one of the mo most effective ways to be a good PM. And that happens to be a very diplomatic skill set. Leading with influence. In most product organizations, that's exactly what you're doing. Uh, product uh, people don't typically have engineers reporting to them, designers, the folks that uh, go off and do and execute. So leading with influence is exceptionally important. Here's an African proverb that I really enjoy and um, give credit to a former teammate of mine that brought that to my attention. I think about it a lot. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So product managers, product leaders think long-term and think about ways to deliver the greatest results and outcome. Um, going beyond what any one individual can do, including yourself, including um, your 10X or engineer, doing it in a way that moves people together within your product development team, across multiple product development teams, across third party partners, et cetera. Um, leading with influence in a, in a way that moves them where they understand why they're doing what they're doing the purpose, um, understanding how that relates back into the broader uh, mission vision of the company, the organization, uh, helping them uh, be better at their jobs and uh, be better at the things that would help them with the way that they're reviewed, uh, understanding how to lead with influence in a manner that helps people move towards a common vision, goal, that's an uh, an exceptionally important skill set to have as a product manager. And naturally, uh, that's what great diplomats do, leading with influence. So um, another uh, example or part of my career that I want to share is one of the more effective ways to lead by influence is going for the objective truths. Uh, being a product manager that uh, as you're asking for help, as we talked about in the earlier slide, it's asking great questions, understanding the truth of your product, your customer, and being able to communicate that well to your team to help them um, ideate together with you to co-create and come up with solutions that are far better than the things that you could do alone from, from any one individual. Um, and that influence carries on and, and rubs off on other folks. So lead with influence. Uh, great product managers do that and great diplomats have that skill set. Listen and communicate well. So I hinted at that, and here's a quote from the Dalai Lama. When you talk, you are only repeating what you already know. But if you listen, you may learn something new. And that reemphasizes that learning approach and asking for help and asking the right questions. Being able to gather as many perspectives as you possibly can, especially through your stakeholders, executive team, um, Legal, legal uh, team, InfoSec, customer service, data science, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, more and more, as you grow in your product career, you're expanding your relationships and conversations across the entire organization in order to, to build the best product and service possible for your customers. So effective listening, understanding, um, understanding, uh, as you ask for help, as you lean into the questions uh, and get them answered and how that leads to better questions and, and better answers that help you understand how to build a better product, a good chunk of that, the majority I would even say, is listening. Uh, so something in my career, product managers, uh, product leaders, you're going to be in a bunch of meetings. That's just comes with the territory. Um, when I speak, typically to summarize and confirm perspectives. And most of the time, if I can help it, I'm listening and I'm speaking last. And that's also uh, another shout out to Sundar Pichai and, and Satya Nadella. Uh, that's a 
common quality that they have around being good diplomats, being the last person to talk. It's a very effective approach. So listen well, uh, be the last person to talk. And that works really well when you're able to synthesize all those perspectives, communicate that outwards. And ultimately, how does that lead towards a decision and an action that helps you drive the outcome that you're looking for? Um, and then how do you communicate that? That's a very important skill set as you grow as a product manager into a product leader. Um, and of course, what I'm about to say, it's a great attribute of being a good diplomat. Driving a win-win culture. Here's this quote from Jeff Bezos. Above all else, align with customers. Win when they win, win only when they win. So I say drive a win-win culture and I pull this quote in because this is a customer-centric mindset that can rub off as well. As you lead with influence, as you combine it with driving a win-win culture, I like to work back from the customer that's a, a very popular methodology uh, coined by Amazon, working back from the customer. So having this mindset where you got your end customer uh, for um, an Amazon, that would be e-commerce, so your, your shopper. And folks um, would align to that within the team, the organization, and the folks that you collaborate with. So that's a common ground, and that's um, more easily understood. However, uh, I want you to think beyond that. I want you to think as every teammate, uh, every engineer that you work with, designer, marketer, et cetera, think of them as your customers and treat them as such. Be a servant leader, find ways to make their experience better in terms of working with you, collaborating with you and help them um, work towards the, the goals that they have. What are they on the hook for and how can you help them towards that without looking for anything in return? Um, Typically, what that leads to is a byproduct for you where um, what I found in my career, they're more willing to help you um, for the things that you're collaborating on now. And they're just a bit more excited to uh, see you in general uh, as um, you catch up in the hallway or on Slack. They're more excited to share their insights and the things that you learn through these conversations, through these um, collisions uh, as uh, we like to call them over at uh, Zappos and the Holacracy side. These collisions are um, invaluable. They help you ideate and cross pollinate and innovate on the customer's behalf. So driving this win-win culture, it has so many benefits and compounds with the other attributes of being a good product manager and being a good diplomat. Uh, so think beyond your end customer and treat everybody that you work with as a customer and perhaps they'll do the same for you. All right, elevate others. As you grow into product leadership, this is exceptionally important. And uh, it's just re-emphasis and bring it to another level. When you go about helping uh, other folks reach their goals, typically they move on up and perhaps that's a byproduct for you. And typically they're doing that for others. And when you scale this leadership, you're scaling, um, you're scaling your impact. When you scale your impact, uh, the further that you can grow along in your career and take on more responsibilities. So here's uh, a Ben Franklin quote that I absolutely love. Tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. So going back into some of the concepts that we talked about, particularly around building a, a win-win culture and um, having that spread through the people that are on your product development team, but also the folks that you just collaborate with. Take every single opportunity to evangelize the product discipline, help people understand uh, why and how you go about uh, the things that you do, your decision-making, what decisions are made, um, the context behind it, and uh, you're influencing, you're, you're leading by example in that manner. Uh, and also, you're gonna be able to help people make better product decisions, even at the lowest levels. As product um, engineers and product designers are doing their work, the, the mental models and the frameworks that you can provide context on, on your prior decisions, that rubs off and helps them do a more effective job and think in a customer-centric manner where, hey, 
how can I solve this customer problem in a way that drives impact for the business? That's an amazing way to elevate others. And typically in the organizations that I've seen, it's also something that um, folks are evaluated on. So being able to craft that story and help people along the way, elevate themselves by product of elevating you and then seeing that scale out when they're helping out others, that's one of the, um, one of the best ways to actually um, accelerate the growth trajectory of your career. So good PMs elevate others and good um, it's, it's good diplomacy. This is the last quote that I'll end with. This is um, from Tony Shea, huge influence in my life and in my profession, my career. People may not remember exactly what you did or what you said, but they always remember how you made them feel. That's what matters the most. And product managers focus on the things that matter the most. Um, so being human centered, being very customer centered and understanding how to make them feel better about your product, your service, that leads to better business outcome. And treating your coworkers, your, the people that you collaborate with uh, as customers and doing the same thing, making them excited to see you and talk to you and work with you. I think that's just a fantastic trait and characteristic of a good PM and naturally just being a good diplomat. So want to be a good PM? There's many ways to go about it. Be a good diplomat. I feel like that's certainly a core attribute and that can carry you far. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully um, I made you feel welcomed and um, made you feel like you learned something today and very happy and delighted to have that opportunity to talk with you. So thank you very much. I can't wait to see you again. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Cheers.